The big man is busy filming one of his masterpieces. This is the first time I've done this by myself, and I'm joined by my spiritual guru, footballing <laughs> legend. This man is the guy I go to if I need to climb a mountain 200 miles on a bike. Absolute legend of the game, Wayne Bridge. How, how are you, Bridgie? Oh, I get a great intro from you, don't I? Mate, I've, <laughs> I love I, it. Mate, I've undercooked it there, I think. There's so much more I could say. Where are you, geez? Anyway, you look like you're in an underground hideout. Yeah, well, it's come on top for me a little bit, so I've, I've, run, I've been on a run. No, it's the uh, studios, <laughs> and it's freezing. Coral and Joe, two massive giants of the media world, and, and I've got this heater that don't even work, Bridgie. Have a look at this, mate. Look. <laughs> oh, my. Like, it's a bit different here. The big man, is, he's filming uh, the new series of King Gary, and he's actually, I've just messaged him, he was actually doing a bit of stunt driving, which I know would be right up your street. King Gary, yeah, yeah, love that. It's great, isn't it? And then he, yeah. uh, he's got the, the King Wagon, he's doing a stunt. <laughs> it sounds... <laughs> oh, brilliant, I can't wait to I'm see driving it. I'm driving him mad with ideas on things for the show. And I've, I've, now I've done a bit of it, I think I'm like some kind of like writer or something. Now I'm in the media. It's, it's good, mate, it's good. To be honest, mate, he doesn't always get a word in. I watched a bit of the Kevin Davis one the other day and he didn't get much of a word in. <laughs> <laughs> So what have you been up to, mate? Oh, mate, nothing, to be honest. I thought once the kid goes, the kids go back to school that it kind of feel normal again. But it doesn't. And I, I don't really do a lot, do I? Let's be honest. I play a bit of golf and go to the gym and I do the odd bit here and there if something comes up. But then going back to school, it still feels a bit weird because there's, there's nothing for me to do. I go to the gym for a couple of hours and then I'm a bit bored, to be honest. And I think... I thought to myself, yes, I've got to start doing something. But then I realised the golf course is open in two weeks, so I'll be sweet as. I'll just be playing three, four rounds of golf a week. I just, just for the listeners, right, around the golf with Bridgie, it's never just around the golf. We played at the, <laughs> we played at, our, at the Shire. I'll give it a little punt. It's a great, great course. And um, he turned up carrying his golf, uh, golf buggy, but also basically just... <laughs> A fridge, a fridge for the beers. <laughs> it was, it was probably about that big. As well. You can't see it, but it was big. You could fit about 50, 60 beers in there. That round actually took about six, seven hours. I, I know, I know. I know. Six, oh. seven hours. Did, did we reload the fridge of the night pole as well? I think we it, did. it got reloaded. It had to be reloaded. There's quite a few of us playing though, aren't there? Yeah. There's quite a few yeah. playing. That is good, mate. The good days will be coming back, mate. And talking oh. about the good days, the last nights. Champions League football. We, we we tend to do Premier League football here, but I think there's a big story. And some of having you on as a defender, because you would have played against these guys. Ronaldo and Messi. Ronaldo the night before, he he looked jaded. He looked like he was frustrated. His team wasn't working. And he looked like an older player, Bridge. You know, the way he plays, he's playing inside. But Messi last night was sensational, mate. And I mean, if, as a defender, this week was a bit different. We're going to go on, let's go to top three toughest players that you've had to mark in your career oh. um and the first of all tell me about marking Ronaldo tell the people at home what it's like what what what, what, is, what did he do don't get me wrong he, he he was he was good he was good but he wasn't at his best I don't think in terms no. of he's gone on to just you know blow the roof off of everything and I think I was always mentally switched on because you knew it was Ronaldo but yeah. I always thought I was naturally quite quick wasn't the quickest over five yards, but I was quick enough, I thought, to keep up with him. With him, it was just keep your eye on the ball. He's going to do 100 step overs. Just don't fall over and stay on your feet with him. And yeah. I always thought I'd done all right against him, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I've been the odd occasion yeah. he got the better of me, but I always thought I'd done all right against him. Um, yeah. But as I said, I, I don't think I played against him at his very, very best. Was his speed like, Richie? Because because in that in that time, was he was he one of the quickest he played against? I think he was one of the quickest once he got going. I think yeah. if, if he had a couple of yards on you, yeah, chance I might not catch him. But I always thought if I switched on, I'd always be all right. You watched Ash, Ash against him. This is where Ash Ashley Cole was brilliant. It was getting on him mm. and like just getting on him straight away and tackling him. He never had space to breathe. And I think I, I was quite good at that in terms of trying to read the game mm. and get on him. So when he's on his first touch, you get his head down. Don't give him time to run at you. Because if he's, if he's running at you full speed, it's very difficult. Um, I thought Ash was brilliant at that when he played Messi, Ronaldo and people like that. 
Um, so I wouldn't say I played against him at his peak. But don't get me wrong, he was still good. But I always felt pretty comfortable, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, really... I, I think he wasn't... the play, he saw, the, When he was a winger, he was obviously great. He's, at, he's physically probably at his peak. But it wasn't when he went for Real Madrid, he started playing more inside like a centre-forward when... When, you know, because his strength is in and around the box, isn't it? Rather than wing and cross, like. But I remember you doing a job, Bridgie, in the in the cup final against Aaron Lennon, the Lip Carlin Cup final. Yeah. He was a tough. I seen him give some left back some nightmares, but you really sort of, you really dealt with him. I felt, you know, you, I, was he yeah. tough to play against? I, I, he's my top one. I, I've always been yeah. my top one. Always been there. Why is that um, then? Because he I've just him and Wrighty actually. Sean Wright Phillips. So whenever I get asked this question, they're the first two that spring to mind. Um, yeah, it's the change of direction. Uh, the first two yards they were rapid over. I remember I've raced yeah. Wrighty at 100 meters, 50 yeah. meters in. He's 10 meters in front of me, but then I start my pace starts to kick in then, and I start to catch him. But the first few yards, them two were just rapid. And yeah, then those centre of gravity, man. like yeah. you'd kick them. And it was like they were like rubber balls. They just bounce off the floor and keep going. So I, know. I think with them too, it was being switched on constantly and trying to read the game that you know when they're going to get the ball. Because as long as you're on their first touch a little bit, mm. they don't get that much time to look up, then I think I've kind of won the battle a little bit because I think I'm yeah. trying to read where he's going to knock it. And I think i always done all right. But don't get me wrong, there's times around and Lennon has literally just roasted me and got the cross in and stuff like that. And, you know, the same with Wright. Me and Wright had some great battles. We always did. Mm. Them two as well, I always thought, were very good at running back the other way as well. Yeah. I think that's something I used to try and impose on both of them, make them work the other way and tire them out a little bit. Yeah, no, that's, that's bang on. Because I look at Wrighty and, and Lennon and, and one-on-ones, they, if you're telling me they're the, they're the best, then... I can see because I can see it in my own eyes. They just drop their shot, they go back. But when you they remember they've been brought up in playing the four four two, when your responsibility was running back, running back, running back. Nowadays, if you watch Mbappe last night, he played wide off the left, but he never run back once. It was just the left forward. That, that, Do you know what I mean? And if you imagine you've done that with Lennon and Ray, imagine that. So they're fresh every time they get the ball. That that would be very. That's a difficult thing to do as a fullback. What do you do because you've. Mm you've got to have a shout from the centre-backs or a shout yeah. from the holding midfield, say, don't worry, push on. You know, part of the manager's job as well, because it's a bit cat and mouse, that. It's, do, you, do you go, do you not? Yeah. But like, yeah, there needs, but, needs to be an organisation behind it with the players. Yeah, as it? long as you're organised with all the other players that are behind you, I, you, I'd carry on bombing on, to be honest. And, you know, I always thought I was a threat going forward. Um, I sat, Kieran Dyer was another one. It was always yeah. a tough game. We never got any. We never got anything out of each other in terms of we'd always just cut each other out of the game the whole time. He'd cover me, I'd cover him, and I think it was th- those. I think we're just two good players cut each other out of the game because you're going to stick we stick with each other going forward and backwards. Yeah, they were yeah, kind of sure. games I kind of hated because they were just boring. Because like, yeah, it, it'd have to be a natural bit of skill to get past them. I was a bit like Wright and Aaron Lennon as a player, though. I started off as a winger. I was quite a sharp winger. I remember. England under-18s. I think we yeah. covered the story, didn't we, last we time? that story, the drunken <laughs> story. <laughs> <laughs> you as well, though, mate. Playing against you in training was, like, was horrible. Um, I got to play against you when I was at City as well, where you'd done me a couple of times, to be honest. But um, Bridgie, like, like, when it comes to pace, like, you're talking like you and Wright were on the next level. If it was 100 metres... Like, you'd have been 10 metres ahead of me after 50. Right, have been 10 metres ahead of you. And by the 100, I'd still be on the 50. And you two would be finished. <laughs> I, I, I remember was the, he, they, they were rapid. Ash was rapid as well the first few yards as well. Yeah. At 50 yeah, yeah. metres, Ash would always beat me. But I always thought I was all right over the 100 metres. I'd catch up in the end. Them type of players just been switched on mentally and reading and where they're going to go. Yeah. Uh, do you know what would have been wicked? Do you remember uh, before, when we were kids, they used to do the, um, the footballers race, the 100 metre sprint. Like, that would have been great. Oh, that what would have been great. You should have done that. that. I would have been that up there, been... you know, I'm telling you. I would have 100%. Been up there. I would have been up there. 100%. I'll tell you another winger I've got to mention. Um, and I played against him at the end of my career. And that's when I realised my career's over because I didn't really like, I just, <laughs> I'm getting ripped up in the championship. What is going on here? Um, was Mares, And I never knew too much about him, to be honest. Mm. 
and he literally twisted me inside and out. And I just thought, my knee was in bits, and I thought, I'm done, mate. I'm getting twisted yeah. up here. I thought this. I was actually embarrassed. I was quite embarrassed. I finished the game, and I felt really embarrassed because most games in the championship, I kind of managed to get through fairly easy. To I felt confident, but he twisted mm. me inside and out. So I'm glad he's got to the level. Yeah, he's at. I don't feel as bad now. What about your toughest opponent, opponents, Geese? Do you know what, mate? It's like. With me, I know, I know I'm up there. I know you're definitely up there, mate. <laughs> you're definitely up there on the pitch and in the bar. <laughs> if there's a lining up some shots, <laughs> you played in some. You played most England games, right? You played against loads. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what it is, Bridgie? Right? I played all over the park. Didn't I? I played left for England, right for Chelsea, and central at West Ham when I was, like playing in the two. So from from, I still see myself as a midfielder, like. You know, that's central. I wasn't, I, I played wing for most of my career, but because that was where they just threw me. But I remember playing against um, Patrick Vieira when we played them yeah. at Arsenal. And it was like we were just two different species of human beings. Like he was this giant man. He was physically imposing. And then, mate, I bounced off him so many times. It was embarrassing. Do you know what I mean? Like, and I'm playing to play centre mid. You can't get the ball off him. No. He was he was brilliant. I know. I mean, I thought it was the, he he tapped me on the shoulder. I was this is a mismatch. I was marking him at a corner and he tapped me on the shoulder and he said, Can I have your shirt? And I thought <laughs> I thought oh, I've made it here. He was Vieira wants my shirt. I think <laughs> it was Carrie. I'm, yeah. In the game, I'm saying, Go give Big Pat my shirt after the game. He might want it for his wall and all that. <laughs> <laughs> He's just going to be shut up, Coley. I could imagine it. you saying that to him in the game. I, I could imagine it. I got his shirt after the game. And um, we ended up at, back at our house. I fucking got Pat's shirt out. Like, no, after a night out, like, look at a legend. Like, he just, he was brilliant that day. But um, two days later, I found out he weren't for him. It was for the chef at Arsenal, who's a West Ham <laughs> fan. Oh, <laughs> so, no. I, <laughs> 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 Oh, yeah. yeah, he's a, he's a he was a blinder. So he was the toughest in that sense. What about other positions though? Wing, you played wing, didn't you? wing back, uh, wing. Do you know what? Like, uh, not just saying it because you're on yourself as left backs. Ash, you know, yeah, thank God Ash. I played yeah. with you more than I played against you. Yeah. Um, right back when I played for England, Danny Alves, mate. I was oh, like that. This, yeah, mate. He was like. Doing, he was running past me, rolling his studs on it as well. I think he megged me. I was like, "Nah, this is this guy is not. He's not. He's made from different stuff." Yeah. So I you always. Ever, you ever play against Cafu, mate? I t oh, Cafu, I two footed him. Do you remember that game? I mean, are you two footed? Is that pre season? Yeah. Yeah, 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 pre season. Yeah, yeah. I started a mass brawl. Yeah. We were playing AC Milan, and they was um for the for the listeners. It was when Mourinho came in. It was when Wrighty first signed, right? And you know what it's like? When a player comes into my position and you're like, I love Wrighty. He's good pals and up. I'm like, right, you have direct competition. I'm like, and he got a nod for the start. And it's only a friendly. And looking back now, <laughs> like, you, you know, you're thinking, he's just played, we were going to play 45 minutes, 45 minutes. So he started, it doesn't matter. The season's four weeks away. But I remember being raging that I weren't playing, right? Starting the game. So coming on in a friendly, it's all nice. No one wants to get injured. The ball's gone to poor Cafu. And I've just got right in front of their bench, and I've just lost lost the plot and just I two foot. It. I never sm smash. I've done him. Yeah, I remember. The it. Do you know what? I thought it was the other way around, but it wasn't. It was you smashing him. I remember <laughs> I it now. And then I had like the names all Gattuso's in my grid. Maldini Nest. I was like, I didn't know whether to grab him up and have a tear up or get my autograph book out. It's <laughs> oh, it brilliant. <laughs> it was brilliant. And then everyone piled in. I thought, oh wow. Knowing it all calmed down. Next time I got the ball, I was actually trying to say sorry because I started, I was just like, as soon as I've done it, I thought, oh, no, I didn't want to over route. And the ball, five, ten minutes later, the ball dropped in midfield and Catuso just done GBH on me, like, oh, and then mate. he got sent off. But then, like, I got up and I, I just, he just started giggling, like, and I just started laughing. I thought, like, do you know what I mean? I was like, back in oh, the day when... Football, it? it was just, it was just what you did, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah so, Caff, but yeah, so... I don't know how good Cafu is because I nearly killed him. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was decent when I played him. Oh, I thought he was bloody like 
as far as right backs go, because obviously the bum on just got nothing out of him. He's got no change yeah. whatsoever. Yeah, you're right. Do you know the Mares thing, Bridgie? Do you? Because going into when you retired and that, do you think you retired? Because I was speaking to Brighton, Brighton fans and they thought you were brilliant, mate. And then you just retired at 33. Yeah. I know you had your knee problem, which we talked about. Do you think you, you went too early or do you think? I definitely didn't go too early. And Brighton were lucky to get out of me what they got out of me, really, when I look back. Really? I, yeah, it's, do you know, every. Every medical I had, my knee was always an issue, but it wasn't an issue in how it felt for me. And I always played all the games. So yeah, they always looked at my knee. I had extra x-rays, I had a couple of little meniscus operations done. And then my medical for Reading, it was like a massive deal. It was like the medical went on for ages, the knee, the knee. But I played like God knows how many games for Brighton. They're like, I oh, must be fine. And then all of a sudden, 10, 12 games in, my knee was just... Something wasn't right. I couldn't change direction right. When I had a tidy up of um, the cartilage in my knee, yeah. the surgeon thought I'd be all right. I just couldn't get back playing. And then I went back to see him afterwards, and he was like, it's literally like deteriorated so quick, like mm. just bone on bone. You have problems with it now. We're talking about, we, we played in our my foundation, Leven Foundation charity yeah. thing. How did you feel after that? Does it still affect you now? Because people listening, Bridget, they don't, they see the players playing and, and all these... I, I, I've seen the pain, especially when you broke your leg and I've had bad yeah. injuries, mate. And, and like, listen, it's a small price to pay because we're very lucky that we do, yeah. but it, it still affects you now, don't it, your, your knee? And you can't yeah, do everything you want to do. It's, um, it's badly now. I'll tell you what doesn't help. Alcohol doesn't help. Um, <laughs> but uh, in terms of playing, yeah, it's like you go to the five-a-side tournament that we played for the Eleven Foundation. I ended up going in goal near the end because after... It's the change in the direction. The joint just... Now, I can go for a jog and I'll be fine. I can climb, yeah. climb mountains. And coming down the mountain was hard for me and you both on the joints. Well, coming yeah. down the mountain was hard on the knee. And so yeah. my everyday... Well, not my everyday life, but I have to be very careful. I've, I went on Soccer AM. Hmm. Put, like, put a cut. Put one in the top bins if you didn't see it. Sorry, um, geez. Oh, sorry, <laughs> geez. Uh, I loved it. I, yeah. Matt, I, could, I couldn't, I could walk, but for two days, I'm like hobbling around. And then, you know, for the next week or so, I'm still not walking right. And yeah. then, you know, three weeks later, I'm, I'm still not right from just going on Soccer M and kicking a few balls. So my, it, my knee, Brighton were lucky to get the year out of me. And I, I loved Brighton. It was brilliant. I played well, but I was lucky. They were lucky to get that much out of me. Just going back to like, you know, how we're all built differently. And, and the, the, me, for people who don't know, me and Bridgie climbed Mont Blanc last year for uh, again for the foundation. Bridgie, that's why he's a diamond, mate. He, he does these <laughs> bad things with me. But, um, mate, it was an amazing experience, weren't it? But there were some oh, funny God, moments, amazing. right? I li Listen, I found it, like, so tough. And though like, Bridgie found it tough, like, it's not easy to do. But no, it's not. It's tough. Coming down, like, talk about going down the mountain is hard. And this is 24 hours. By the way, when we slept in the hut, so we got to the hut, you sort of got, for those who don't know, you get to the hut and it's all like halfway. You've done five hours of steep rock climbing and you're finished and then you sleep in the hut and then you make the, um, you go for the summit in the night. And um, Bridget's like got two to the in the morning, innit? You get up at like yeah, two yeah. in the morning, yeah. So um, we've got to the hut and then bridgie has gone, um, should, we go for, should we go for the ascent now? And I've gone, Oh, geez, I think I could do him a sleep. <laughs> All right, so there's a bar in this hut. So he's got on the beers and he's got, do you want a beer? I'm like, no, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in disarray here. Like, and he just wants to get on it. Like, and I'm like, so anyway, it's in France. And it's, we're in this, we're sharing the hut with all these Frenchmen and women and they're lovely. There's not too many Brits there. And we're sleeping on these, like, like they look like boxes on top of each other. Very and he's tight, gone, very tight. And he's gone, Oh, do you know what? I'm not going to sleep. Should we just stay up? Went, we should try and sleep. And he's like, I'm not going to sleep. I'm not going to sleep. All right, so we sleep next to each other. And like, within five minutes, I just hear him snoring. <laughs> right? And I'm like, I can't sleep. <laughs> we wake up. We're the first ones up. But by the time we get the, the gear on, we're the last people out of the, the hut <laughs> trying to get up the mountain. We get there, right? And it's, it's, it's one of the hardest things I've ever done. It's unbelievable. It we get there. It's brilliant. But in coming down my body just starts packing in. And he's just marching away in front, buzzing with himself. By the time I got down, to, and I kept going to the fella like, is this it? How, many, how long? How long? Because I know my body's struggling. 
we get right down to the bottom and I start hallucinating, don't I? <laughs> and I'm having a round. <laughs> I'm going, we're going down the last hill, the last, right at the end. Like, it's not even hard. It's just a glacier walk downhill. And I'm convinced he's uphill, aren't he's, I? He, Joe thinks he's walking uphill. I'm, going, I'm having a go. At, <laughs> I'm having a go at the, the mountain. I go, you told me there was no fucking uphills. We're done. He goes, you're going downhill, mate. You're going downhill. And I'm yeah, hallucinating. And he's just... And he's just bowling away, not a care in the world. And he went and he went to play golf. I need to say that's why he's a built differently <laughs> to me. He went Find to play golf. And then played 18 holes. Yeah. <laughs> unbelievable. I was in my bed feeling like a bag of spanners. So Bridgie, unbelievable. I just wanted it's, to say it's, that. It's, hard. it's it's one of them things, it's so hard. Don't, I was in exactly the same place as you though, but it was like I didn't ask no questions. I didn't yeah. want to know how long was left to go. I just wanted to get my nut down and get it over and done with. And I, I felt bad. I left you behind for a bit, didn't I, on the way down. But I was like, I've got, I've got to go because my, I was, I was the same as you. It was just get it over and done with. I couldn't ask any questions. But oh, mate, it's well, brilliant, mate, mate. We were, we were. The thing is, we were last to leave. We were the last yeah. to leave to go up. We were the first up there. Yeah, we was, we was. Because everyone yeah. else turned around. So the weather was that bad. And yeah. I remember them saying they were they were talking about five to six hours to get up there. Yeah, we were up and down. We were up and down within that time. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We, yeah. we, we went quick. We were up and down yeah. quick. Yeah, they were. We did a bit, guys. We did a bit. Yeah. But to play golf the next day, you're you're built differently. <laughs> to be fair, I was crap though. I was crap. <laughs> we digress. Anyway, <laughs> going back to like retirement, going down the leagues, I found that. When I went to Co- I went to Coventry. Like I literally had no one bridge because of the problems. Yeah. I hadn't played the. I had the opposite to you. I, I just didn't play the games. Like I couldn't get out there. And I went down to Coventry, and that's where I bumped into like James Madison, and another lad, Adam Armstrong, uh, Jacob Murphy, Ryan, all these young players on loan, and they was all fantastic players. Like yeah, and you do, you do start thinking to yourself, like, don't you, like. Oh, I had a couple of games when I'm being overrun. I did all right. I've like, Coventry fans are too. I, I played all right and I, I was building my fitness back up. Yeah. But um, pl- seeing them boys, like, the, the quality they had, you think to yourself, right, you sort of know that's my time. Like, you're in a situation with Mares. Like, yeah. I saw, like, the levels them boys were hitting and the physicality they could do. And I just, you just get to an age and but you can't do the output. They were better than you, though. They weren't better than you then, were they? No, but it's the, it's the physical output. Yeah. I, the, I, I'm similar boat to you, Bridgie. Tony Mowbray was brilliant with me. If I trained twice, maximum three times a week, I could play yeah. on a Saturday. If you asked me to train more than that or go in the gym, my knee would blow up. Yeah. It was, you know, so as you get older, you've got to manage it. That's why watching these players like Messi and Ronaldo continue to keep these levels in late into their 30s is incredible. But like you said, like early on, they'd live a different life to what we did, didn't they? Do you know what I mean? They lived, they lived it right. And we, although we got some good memories, we didn't yeah. do it quite as well. They've definitely lived it right. I don't... You think about the era that we came into, mm. that you were probably having two, at least two nights out a week, the era that yeah. we first came into it, if you think about it. Well, I'm, I'm sure you did at West Ham. Yeah, yeah, they no, would have no, had no, a good sure. drinking squad. You would have been yeah. out... You would have at least been out once a week. They, they probably weren't going out at all, Joe. You know what I mean? And it, it probably just catches up with you. It does. And all the other stuff, Richie, like all the recovery stuff they do, and the fact... Of, what about the food? Like... I just carried on eating like a normal lad would do. Like, you know, you had your takeaways and, you know. We were probably, you would have been the same. Were you coaching to most games in the beginning? Yeah, yeah. And then on the yeah. coach home, we'd either have fish and chips, pizza or burgers. Yeah, yeah. And like 48 crate of beer. Yeah. You know what I mean? It Mate, was, it's now insane, it's protein, it? straight water, but they were probably doing that from an early age. Yeah, we yeah. We were so did. far behind the, yeah, the English so far culture behind. in that. But yeah, yeah it's... A dropping down the leagues is, I don't know if you'd call it embarrassing. I don't think it's embarrassing. Um, for me, definitely, I was having a hard time at sitting. For me, I was just glad to get back down south mm. and, get, and play yeah. from home. I just, I just thought there's a lot of pressure, a bit of pressure, you know, because you're dropping down the leagues. You don't... People, people you want to look more from you. Yeah. 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 You yeah. want to look good because you know if you're crap, you're going to get abused from mm. well, one publicly like press, but also the fans. Mm. Like last thing you want to do is be going through a bad spell and being abused by fans. Luckily, like I, I was, I done well at Brighton. To be honest, I did really well. I thought everything. I didn't find anything a struggle. You know, played against Saha. I always done well against him. The Lassie, mm. they're always quite quick. I still kept up with them. Played with injections, but it, you know, it is. 
like you said, the, the manager's got to give you the days off. It's hard, isn't it? Mm. It's physically it's hard, every day. Like Gus was great. It's hard. It's not easy. Yeah. Well, we had that conversation about Gus, our manager. Like you said, he was he was good with you, Gus Poyer at Brighton to sort of let you do your thing. Understood you as a person. Some of the players might might not have liked it and thought it was wrong. Um, he would he would give me time off if I wanted. Um, he wouldn't necessarily just give it to me like that. He thought if I needed it, if I needed a rest, he'd let me. If I played a lot of games, I played with injections and a lot of painkillers yeah. through a lot of it. So he knew I was the type of player that would leave it all out there and I wouldn't just take the piss, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there was a couple of times where, obviously, I, my missus was in the limelight a little bit. So when we went out in London, I'd been photographed Pissed, pissed up coming out of the club. You've got, the, like, best dr- you've got the best drunk eyes as well. You, know? you can't oh, lie. After two beers, my eyes go. And then <laughs> it'd be straight in early in the morning. And I luckily, I'd be there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, And it yeah. wasn't before proper training. I was injured at the time. But he obviously thought, I'm going in, check he's there. I was always there early, seven, half, seven, on the treatment table. And he would say to me, I'm just coming in to check. I've seen the pictures. <laughs> you know what I mean? He, he was good. He was good to me. He was good to Matty Upson when he was there. And he was, you know, what I liked about him. He said to all the players, "This is what I loved about Gus." He would be right. I understand you want nights out. I understand there's a woman you might have been after, and <laughs> she's finally, you know, it's finally come round. You spend the night, so we go out have dinner, and you have a long night of whatever it is you want to call it. <laughs> You come in the next day, you're tired. Just tell me. You know, you yeah. go and have a nice bath and a relax. You get back to training the next day. <laughs> Whether any of the lads use that, I don't know. But he was good like that. He would always say, be honest to me, you know. I don't want you coming in every week saying, oh, you've been out and you don't feel great. Can I have a day off training? But, you know, it does happen. So just be honest because I don't want you to yeah. get injured. I like that, Bridgie. I think I'd use yeah. that myself. I, I just put myself in a picture in a gaffer now where I've said that to my team. <laughs> little knock on the door. One of your strike on the young players. <laughs> gaffer. Don't think I could trade today. I met some... Had a night of passion. Bit, yeah. <laughs> she, was, she, was, she was a bit of a mix, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't slept much. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you imagine if we'd done it at the start of our career when we were at Southampton oh. West Ham, everyone would have been oh. using it. Oh, you know mate, I mean? yeah. yeah that's, these, you're managing different, different players now, yeah. wouldn't you? Yeah. You're watching All to Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral. I've been with my wife now 45 years. We're, we're childhood sweethearts. We've been together since we were 16 and 15. Oh, come on, Joe. You're starting to make me cry now. What's up yeah. here? Jeez, well, that's, that's the intention, Alan, to make you all cry. <laughs> Check out the full video now to find out why Joe is Alan's next winner. What do you miss about it, Bridgie? What, what, what? You know what? What? Um, what? What can't you get back? Money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think um, it's definitely. I missed the game. I didn't think I'd miss it this much. I felt like I was ready to retire, but that's probably for injuries. Do you know what I mean? I'd yeah, love to go yeah. back. I'd love to go back and do it all over again. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely miss it. For instance, when we've got together, I mean, we get together and it's just great to get together. You know, the football thing we yeah. did, you know, we had Jamo yeah. down, Jolian. It's good to see all faces. Yeah. Nothing's changed. Everyone gets on. Everyone has a beer together. Mm. I miss I miss seeing everyone yeah. more often. Do you know what I mean? Because a lot of the time it, I'm with my kids a lot. So it's great to get out. And yeah, on, a, on a daily basis, I probably don't miss it. But I definitely definitely miss getting together when we get together mm. i think it's always a good laugh and yeah we probably don't do enough of it what about you that's yeah, exactly you definitely same, miss mate. it I, I, I you miss... could still be playing by the way <laughs> i can't mate i reckon I you could mate uh, um what do i miss about it i i miss everything about it like and the same with you i'd give it all back to start again um i the social just just going in and like something like what job like you're going in at half eight in the morning and the, the master is like throwing a chair through a, a wall or oh, you know, I feel flat <laughs> some of the bad news lads, the yeah. bad, like, you're sitting in there and then there's like you know they just something something's happening always something happening there's a story something someone's done something you're coming in yeah um, I cannot like do you know I just can't think of any other job that would be could even have a 
maybe Wolf, have you watched Wolf for Wall Street? That seemed like a bit mental <laughs> time. They seemed like they had a good crack doing that. Um, yeah. But yeah, I just can't think of anything else that could be like it, mate. It's because amazing. It, if there was a HR department when we was playing in football clubs, it would be like you'd be people would be getting sacked left, right, and oh, centre. Really. Like the times are different, but like it is different. Would you? <laughs> would you? Would you want to go back and? Would you still want the social side of it? Obviously, we live for a great era, I think. Well, yeah. Whereas you look at it now, and there can't be that much of a social mm. side with the lads with social media. No. They probably can't go out as much. You definitely can't. Obviously, the drinking culture fizzled out when we were playing. Yeah. 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 There's, there's different different people. And, and progress in ter- on the pitch, I think. I'm a great believer in that. There's all these little details of football's tactically better and things like that. Like, I would love to play the player I am in this, the way they play football, in the sense, like, I look at, you know, they're, they're, they're playing the ball through lines. Like The things that I was good at, like receiving a ball, finding space, picking a pass and, and moving, things that I was good at are more sort of sought after now. There's more yeah. positions on the pitch. But, no, you're right, mate. I, 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 we, we had a great time. And yeah. you've always got to, listen, always be happy for what you've got. And then yeah, we, we had a... We did have a we did have a good time. I I'm like you though. I do look at the game now, and I think oh, I'd love to play now just to see to see what it's like. Physic well, one physically because obviously, yeah. is it, I don't know if it's more demanding, but they obviously look after themselves. Yeah, a lot better. Well, they we did through our career. It started to look after ourselves more. Yeah, but I'd love to because I do look at personally. I look at fullbacks now, and I think apart from Luke Shaw, I'm a little bit like I don't see. Just don't I don't see it. I just don't see uh obviously, you know, Trent and feel that, but of late, I don't know. I just I think Luke's been you got Trent and that, but I just think some some of the I think wingers maybe somewhere I don't think are as good as what they used to be. I don't think I don't think they're under as much pressure sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like it's just different. I, I think nowadays you'd have suited your game as well because you was almost I, I felt you you in our era, defender. You were defending defender first, and then attacking. Yeah. Whereas, so you you was a winger for our under 18s weren't yeah. you? I remember you playing like like left of a three up front. Yeah. So your natural tendency was to go forward, and you, or the defending side of it, you just learnt on the job, and you was you mastered that side of it. Yeah. But imagine like you, I look at like the license that Trent's and Bruce James. So, yeah. And, you know, like you'd be like, you'd be able to go all the time. Yeah. All the time. I do. Definitely games where I felt like, oh, but we careful here. But like you say, they're, they're just more like just bombing on all the time, there's, just constantly. Not, I know. Just, I it know. makes your life so much easier as a fullback to just be able yeah. to bomb on all the time. Yeah. You, the, the managers are like, if you're not bombing on now, the managers are like saying to you, wait, what are you doing? You, yeah. That's your job. Like you got, you'd have been, you'd have thrived. You'd have thrived. I'm not sure how you'd have been with the protein shakes and the, and the salads. And <laughs> 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 Bridgie. I can't thank you enough for doing this, mate. Um, this episode just have some some semblance of normality. We do a prediction table, which right. I'm wiping the floor with Tom. By the way, uh, the guests are doing all right. So what we do? You're going to give me a win, draw, a loss. I give you three games, and you get points. Right, I don't know. Okay. How to, I don't know how you done last time. I think you've actually done quite well. So did I do all right. right. Whenever did, I put yeah. money on it, I never win. So <laughs> I do all right if I'm not putting money on it. Here we go. Ready? Okay. Man United versus West Ham. Oh my God! I'm, I'm just not picking United just because I don't, uh, just I don't like them. <laughs> um, uh, and West Ham are doing all right, mate. Do you know what? I want West Ham to win. I don't want Man United to win. I'm going to go in the middle, go draw. Okay. I think, I think, I think they can get. So, where is it at? Sorry. Man United home. I'm going to go draw. I'm going to go draw. Yeah. Come on, come but, on, West Ham. Yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to go West Ham. I watched him the other yeah. night, and what a job David Moyes has done! Just like they're solid. Oh, they've done like, a great job. I just yeah. Done I just I want I want Man United to, when when I want Man United to lose so badly they end up winning. So I'm going, oh. so I'm going in the middle. Draw. I've got to be neutral. Now I'm in the media, Bridgie. I've, I'm I'm neutral, completely neutral. <laughs> I love love everyone. They always used to win everything, Man United, right? So that bugs me. Yeah. So they always used to win everything. So I used to want them to lose. <laughs> And then a lot of the Man United fans, when I think of them, don't really like them either. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> Most of them are just glory hunters. They're not even from United. Uh, never been to a game. We played first season at Chelsea. We played Man United. We beat them one nil. I I got brought down for the penalty. Roy Keane fouled me. Frank scored it one nil when we went top of the league. And we played. Remember when we used to just go to Heathrow and just walk through the terminal when we first yeah, European yeah. tour at Chelsea. Yeah. Some geezer was there. Fella, his missus, and in a Man United shirt, and his son just started like putting it right on me. And, like, and I'm like, like you fuck. I'm like. Do you know, like, were you like, you I think so, you what? definitely said something back. No, I did. I, I give him a bit, mate. I did, yeah. I did. But, like, yeah, he, he was his missus and his kid, and he's like, yeah. he was getting you fucking yeah. dive. Blah, blah, blah. And, and, listen, go back and look at it. It wasn't a dive. He clipped yeah. me. But I think it, with fucking, them as well, when you beat him, it's like, you don't deserve to beat us. A bit like, do you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, who won, mate? We are. <laughs> <laughs> right, we don't like United, Matt. right? <laughs> <laughs> but Wolves first Liverpool. Wolves at home. Uh, wolves. Yeah, good shout. Yeah. I mean, got back to winning ways, but they're struggling, mate. Got back to winning ways, but they're struggling. Mm. So I'm going mm. Wolves. And Wolves Wolves need a couple of wins to make sure they're 100% safe, I'd say. Or what? So, yeah. yeah, Wolves. Okay. Good shout, mate. I'm going to go with Liverpool, mate, because it's now or never. Just because I said Wolves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now or never. It is now or never. They, they, they need it badly, but yeah. Right, Bridgie, and finally, the big game of the weekend, the North London derby. With Coral, you can get 6-4 to four for Arsenal at home against Tottenham Hot Spurs of North London, 7-4. to four. So that's right bang in the middle. Where, where are you seeing this one, mate? Well, don't like either of them, either of them, if that counts for anything. <laughs> <laughs> Um, like you say, it's a tight one, to be honest. Yeah. I think with both of them, you never know what you're going to get. Mm. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm just going to go for, uh, yeah, it could be just because of that. I'm going to go draw. Yeah. Gonna go, I That's think if, if, they, if they both turn up, I think, I think it could be a draw. You yeah. Know what I mean, I, with them two, it's just, it's don't know what's going to happen with either of them. You don't know yeah. it's going to get. Good, bad from from even, but there's no. Con- don't think there's any consistency. And I think Arsenal have obviously turned it around from where they they were like months and months ago. But yeah, I just there's no consistency. I don't think from from either of them. No, good point, mate. Good point. I'm gonna go with Spurs because I just I just feel having Bale in the team, you know, coming back to some kind of form. They might have a little bit more more class at the top end of the pitch. But seven to four for Spurs, I think, is a good bet from Coral this weekend. Yeah, he's easily been on fire lately, and he's fair. It makes you wonder why yeah. he hasn't been playing from the beginning. Bridgie, thanks so much for today. Always great to win, Joe. We'll be back. We'll be back next week. All to play for. Big Tom Davis back in my seat. Let, put it this way, my presenting. I don't think I'll be stepping into Piers Morgan's <laughs> shoes on <laughs> Good Morning Britain anytime soon. I've had a go. I've had a go, which is all you can ask for all your players. Um, yeah. So next week, we'll ask Big Tom Harry's stunt driving went. Hopefully, the, he survives. Mate, Bridger, you're a legend. Cheers, mate. I love you. Get me a cameo and on I'll that see... show or what? <laughs> mate, listen. I'm... <laughs> Contracts are being drawn up as we speak. Top man. All right. Cheers, see you geez, later. Geez, up, have a good one. Thanks, pal. Take care. You've been watching All to Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral.